Good evening. Good evening, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. Lord Jesus, you gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. forever, O oh God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court official officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The, good, the God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as a leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, 
as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. There were countless in number and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull in in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Then he said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by the kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's all about fish and sheep. Yeah, they go together, actually. Well, the first part sounds like a wonderful fishing story, right? Yeah. Well, last week, uh, Rich, Russ, Dick, and Joan, and we, uh, myself, we went fishing at the lake for spoon bill uh, snagging. As soon as we reached there, Rich and Russ were working on to uh, launch the boat, and we two were kind of talking. A guy came to us, and he started talking about his uh, adventurous fishing the week before. You know, in 20 minutes, they were able to get uh, eight or 10 uh, spoon bill. And John was so excited about, you know, hearing this wonderful story because first time he was going to snagging me too. So we were just there. Um, so, you know, in 20 minutes, they were able to get some eight big spoon bill, you know, for people, so it was fine. 
But as soon as the man left, I told John, John, there is a problem here. Uh, it's called 20% theory. He looked at me and asked, what is that? I said, well, when you hear a fishing story, only take 20% of that. <laughs> but then what happened? Last week, I went, you know, fishing with someone, uh, Mike Schumann, and uh, we caught a lot of crappy. So I put those uh, pictures on Facebook. John comes to and asks me the question, so should I take only 20% of that? <laughs> so that's the fishing stories, okay? They go like that. That's why I take the pictures, so you know, the, yeah, at least to make people believe. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so it's the first part is all about fishing. The disciples, they were with Jesus. But at the time of his passion, his death, they did not stay with him. They abandoned Jesus basically to save themselves. And now, of course, they have seen Jesus at least two times after his resurrection. But they still do not follow it. They still do not get it. The shame in them, the anger in them, the guilt feeling in them, and finally, they don't even understand the whole concept of resurrection, even after Jesus appeared to them. So they are tired. They go back to their old business, doing fishing. Simon Peter goes, they follow him. They are fishing. They are superficial men. They can catch the limit in 20 minutes, but they tried all night caught nothing. Net is empty. And that's when they see this man grilling fish on the shore. They go and they see the breakfast is ready. And Jesus, they realize, of course, it was Jesus. And he asked them to do something else. He said, they are expert in fishing. They tried everything possible. But now Jesus is asking them to do something different, change the direction, do something else. But for them, that was not going to make any sense in reality because they knew everything about fishing. They tried everything that worked and now it, this time it did not work, but still, because it was Jesus, they decided to change according to his direction. And we know how it happens. 153 fish. Well, that's a wonderful number, right? Okay. The two reasons, of course, there are several ways we understand it, so don't worry much about the number, but St. Jerome says, according to the people of the time, the Galilean people believed in the time, their understanding was that there were only 153 species of fish. So therefore, they caught one from every species of fish. According to their understanding, the first century people in the, in the Galilean area believed that 153 species of fish. That's one interpretation. St. Augustine goes further and according to him, it's all about the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. So we have 17. Okay, but how do you come to 153 with 17? It's actually 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 14 plus 15 plus 16 plus 17 is 153. That's the Augustinian style of understanding. Don't worry about all that, okay? Just leave it there. It simply means... It simply means in reality that net represents church and the fish represents everyone in the world. And that's the simple meaning of that. So they were asked to gather everyone and they were able to gather everybody in this world, a representation from every, every part of the world. All are included in it. The most interesting thing is Jesus prepared the breakfast for them. Enough and more food for them. 
we know that he was able to feed 5000 people with two small fish and here we have only seven or eight people and they have 153 large fish that's a lot of fish for seven people of course but again he prepared their breakfast already he broke the bread he also gave them the fish and of course that's a new way of understanding the holy eucharist as well and now we jump into sheep sheep the first is fish and fishing this is sheep and shepherding peter of course he denied jesus three times what did he deny actually what did he say he said clearly i do not know this man i do not belong to his group i don't know him i do not belong to him it's actually all about a relationship he denied his relation with jesus and now jesus is making him repeat three times hey i know you i belong to you three times he repeating i know you jesus i love you jesus and i belong to you jesus because he was asking do you treat me as your brother do you treat me as a friend and peter says yes you know that the broken relationship is restored but more than that jesus from that moment onwards till then jesus was the only good shepherd and now jesus is asking peter to be a shepherd and the last thing is follow me so first thing is follow me and fish with me fish for me fishes of men how did jesus fish of course he went to the sinners he went to the tax collectors he went to the lepers he went to the sick the blind the mute he went to them restored them took them with him that was his style of fishing and now he tells him follow me in my fishing style reach out to them restore them bring them into your net fishing and now once you're done with the fishing or that will be going on but the fish that you have you have to treat them like sheep shepherd them shepherd my sheep be good shepherds like me follow me how did jesus shepherd his people well of course as a good shepherd he offered his own life to save the sheep follow me and that's the meaning of fishing jesus a style of fishing and jesus a style of shepherding and that's what he is asking his disciples even today follow me and we are supposed to do the same thing bring find those people restore them bring them into his net and those who are in the net in the church shepherd them as jesus did offer our own lives for the salvation of others Let's proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from God, begotten of made, can substantial the Father. Through him all things were made, For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was sent of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified, and the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. 
and rose again the dead in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seen in the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is a rule and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one who will Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess with baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings, and we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to welcome Jesus into our lives. For the Church, may we, as the body of Christ, be strengthened by the Spirit in living out the truth of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the continued generosity of our community may assist those who are most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all expecting mothers, biological and adoptive, that through the intercession of Mary, Mother of the Church, they may prepare for the new life in the womb and may receive the support of a nurturing community of faith in the raising of their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders throughout the world, may the Lord grant them hearts for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the sick and dying, may the knowledge of the resurrection give them strength and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all gathered here, may the unconditional love of Christ fill us with courage and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all those affected by the fighting in Ukraine, for those who have lost lives, loved ones, and homes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially Dan Dunlop, may they come to share in the fullness of eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the souls of Vernon and Penny Ross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God, to know despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Word.
Pray for this and so straight of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your excellent church, and as he hath given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty to our salvation at all times to acclaim your Lord, but in this time above all, to load it more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread toward the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who please to you throughout the ages, who we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and for my divine deeds whom we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, and you will look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy One reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my own, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord. We grant that we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, anointing Mass on Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Uh, May Mary Crowning will be at the 8 a.m. Mass on Wednesday, May 4th. And no friendship circle uh, gathering this month. Engaged in Crown will be here next weekend, May 6th through May 8th. Well, we all know that we, when you go to uh, weddings in different churches, they all do things differently, right? Yeah. So, based on the instruction of Pope Francis, our diocese has given us some instructions to how to do the wedding ceremony uh, in all the parishes the same way. So, this booklet actually came out some uh, five, six years ago. And therefore, I made some copies of this booklet and they must be in the back of the church. You can pick one. Uh, so how are we going to do wedding ceremonies in this church is based on this book given by the Bishop of the Diocese of Jefferson City as per the instruction of Pope Francis so I will be following this instruction in this church if you don't like it uh, you can go any other place (laughs) okay it's going to be like you know We begin the celebration as any other Mass. It's a sacrament. So we have a procession. The cross will be the first one. The candles will follow. The priest and the deacons will be behind them. Then the uh, wedding party, two by two. uh, And then finally, the maid of honor and the best man 
the flower girls or boys whatever and then finally uh, the bride can go with the uh, her dad or she can go with the groom or she can walk alone it's all up to we have options there but the procession is going to be like that and they come here and we begin the mass as usual and then uh, all the options and at the end we will process out and that's going to be uh, very simple and then when we begin the procession we ring the bell and everyone stands so it's all going to be part of the procession we all process in to celebrate the sacraments there won't be any special drama or any waiting for uh, the bride to come it's all part of one procession and no throwing your flowers or anything because you know the most important person is the Jesus Christ so bring as many as flowers you can and fill them all in the whole sanctuary recently I don't see any flowers for the weddings they don't do decorate the church at all it's all decorate the whole and then they may throw a few uh, petals of plastic flowers that's not good you can fill the church because the most important part of the wedding ceremony happens in the church so you may fill the whole sanctuary with all the flowers again it's all there not done by me but by the bishop of the diocese as per the instruction of the pope so i will follow it and really if you don't like it you can go anywhere else <laughs> The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of snares of the devil. May God reveal him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits. To crowd through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. At the name.